Today, we shoot the breeze, have a quick question from my wife, we see what type of stuff I got on the table today, we're gonna answer a few of your questions from the mailbag, and we're gonna talk verse of the day. This is the Gideon's Tactical Show, episode two. Well, folks, so much to get to today. Really excited for this episode. You know, this is our second one after our debut last week. We will be having a playlist created, I hope by the time that this goes live, of the Gideon's Tactical Show as we continue to build week after week. We're gonna be doing these once a week, just fun, uh, entertaining, informational videos. Not focusing on a particular gear item and doing a gear review, but f focusing on my ninja hand moves. But just having a good time, entertaining, and bringing some information along the way in kind of a gear-focused outdoor survival EDC. So today, we're gonna jump right away to a quick message that Mrs. Gideon's Tactical has for us. Hey there, GT family. I'm really excited to be a guest on the Gideon's Tactical Show next week. I wanna answer some of the questions you have for me. So in the comments below, put hashtag mailbag Mrs. GT, and I'll answer some of them in our next episode. Plus some other fun segments I'm gonna participate in next week. See you then. So that's gonna be really exciting to have her with us next week. You don't wanna miss it, so start putting in those mailbag questions and just make sure if you want it to be asked of her and to her uh, to put uh, beginning or excuse me uh, hashtag mailbag Mrs. GT and we'll make sure that uh, she'll have a look at them and uh, we'll pick several of those for her to answer next week. Really excited to get that female perspective. Well, with that, we're going to do this first segment here that I call shooting the breeze amongst the trees. And this is a segment that I just want to give you a few thoughts, maybe concepts I'm thinking of, or just, you know, things that I've learned along the way and that I feel might be beneficial for those of you watching to just apply to life. And so today I want to talk about this concept that it's never as bad as you think it is and it's never as good as you think it is. Now the first time I ever heard this concept was from my buddy Brian. You know, he's one of our videographers, a little bit older than me, uh, was my youth pastor, you know, when I was growing up and have uh, now just forged a friendship over the years, worked together, um, you know, gone out on so many adventures together. He has helped in so many different ways here at the channel. But when I was much younger, he gave me that advice that in life there will be moments where you feel like the world is coming unglued the world is falling apart and you know what what's the point or you built up something maybe it's a part of your family maybe it's something at work you know a project you're working on and just the bottom falls out from under it and you're just like man I'm gonna give up I'm gonna give up on this thing I'm gonna give up on life I'm gonna give up on situations or circumstances and you just feel like it's the worst thing in the world that the situations you're living in are just the worst and uh it's never as bad as you think it might be in the moment. I think our minds can naturally tend to go to the worst and uh, it's never that bad. It's never as bad as you think it is. You might be in a situation right now that is horrendous. Uh, you know, something that you've poured your life into is coming to an end, uh, is breaking up, is falling apart, the bottom fell out from under you, um, you know, in maybe relationships, it could be in jobs, it could be in so many different things in life. But I wanna encourage you that it is never as bad as you think it is. Now on the flip side, it's never as good as you think it is. Sometimes we can think that when we hear a particular concept or we're starting to invest in a certain area of life that's just the best thing on the planet that there's never going to be a problem that's never going to be an issue that things are just humming along and can only ever get better and uh, that's not true either you know it's never as good as you think it is there are things that we can always shore up there are things in life that we can always work on you know maybe uh, you're married and your marriage you feel is just like rock solid particularly dudes tend to feel like this we tend to feel like what's what's the big deal you know and our wives are like Eh, that's not necessarily the case. Um, you know, there's some things you could work on. And uh, it, life is never as bad good as you think it is either. And to always be on alert, to always be shoring up, you know, reinforcing the foundation of your life, the foundation of marriages and relationships and jobs and, and whatever it is. So to really, the point of this would be to have a really even keel thought in life and try and remind yourself of that. Just recently I had somebody, 
you know, um, on something that I had built up with my job and had been working, investing a lot of time in, somebody come to me and tell me that they really weren't getting anything out of the, the thing that we had been building up and that I had really invested a lot of time into. And immediately I went to the worst. Like, this thing is garbage. All this time in investment is just worthless. Why am I even trying this? I'm going to have to start from scratch and just scrap, scrape the whole thing. And, you know, think people that have, I've entrusted with some of these projects are just not doing their job and I am done. Like, this is ridiculous. And I had to go back to this kind of idea and this concept of, okay, Aaron, calm down. It's not as bad as you think it is. Um, and there have been moments where I'm like, man, life is great. And like, you know, this, this particular situation or man, my marriage or whatever it is, just like there, it can't get any better. It's the per it's perfect. And then something comes in and it's like, well, no, it's not bad, but you know, there's some things that are not perfect and you need to work on some of these areas of your job or some of these areas of your, you know, how you're raising your children, you know, or whatever it is. So, um, this shooting the breeze amongst the trees concept today, um, and, and segment, I want to just leave you with that, that. Um, try to be even keeled. If life is giving you a bunch of lemons right now, uh, it is, it's not over. Life is not over and it's not the worst thing in the world of what's happening. You will recover. Things will be better and that uh, it is not as bad as you might think it is. And on the flip side, if you think you're on cloud nine and like life is just like, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, for the rest of your life, um, second, you know, take, take a, take a moment, Make sure to you know strengthen some stuff. Maybe get some outside perspective of like, hey, is everything going all right? Could there, I maybe do some things better in this area? And uh, there there can always be room for improvement. So I hope that this little segment right here, shooting the breeze amongst the trees, has encouraged you, giving you some food for thought. And the next time you're faced with one of those situations where you think it's the worst thing in the world or the best thing in the world, just double check yourself and remind yourself of that concept that it's never as good or bad as you think it is. And this is a perfect segue into one of our first of two uh, quick commercial breaks that I'm just going to take here uh, is just to remind you guys and thank you always for your support. You know, this is um, a viewer funded channel where you guys support the channel by when using your purchase money when you see something that connects with you. And I always want to present stuff, both pros and cons, so you can make a wise choice. Is this a gear item I need? Is this a gear item I don't need? I never want you guys to go buy something and go, dude, I didn't need that. Thanks for you know, like steering me in the wrong direction. I always want to point you guys in the right direction, give you all the data points so that you can make that wise choice. But when you guys use those Blade HQ and Amazon hyperlinks, guys, it is awesome and mind blowing and so helpful and helps me to continue to make content just like this. So thank you so much for your continued support. Links in the description below over to Blade HQ and Amazon. And that's a great segue into our next segment um, that I want to just share with you. What's on the table? This is a segment I call what's on the table. This area that we're in right now is my studio that I'm making these content, but I also do a lot of tabletop shots or just plan out my next shoot that I'm doing. And there's always like 50 items that are on the table. Now I'm just going to go through a few here that I did not clear off. I was doing a couple shoots the other night of like tabletop reviews and stuff. And so I got a plethora of different stuff. We'll just hit the, some of these have been reviewed. Some of them have not. And I'll just hit this stuff real quick with you. All right, we'll jump into it with uh, some flashlights. Right now, I'm working on a two-for-one. Um, I purchased the Streamlight Polytac flashlight a while ago for my shotgun like weapon light. Um, I really like it. I'm not done fully testing it. I have to see. I actually have noticed when I've done some testing with the shotgun that it's fl it's fluctuating between its settings of like strobe, low, high. And I don't know if there was just like an issue that I didn't like tighten it down all the way or if the recoil of the shotgun is like launching the batteries back into the button and making it cycle through its settings, which if that's the case, that's a terrible weapon light. You cannot use that, uh, at least for a shotgun. And that's, it was recommended in several online reviews and stuff uh, as a good shotgun light, weapon light. So I will be testing that out. Um, and I just have to do a few final tests, but I really like it. I mean, as an EDC light, even if you're willing to go a little bit bigger, um, it's rather inexpensive, uh, about $35. Uh, we'll have links again, Blaze Q, Amazon, that type of stuff below. Um, Polymer uses two 123 CR, CR123 lights, three settings, simple, straightforward. Uh, and I will be at the same time that I do that, running it up against the 511 TPT L2 251 because they have almost the exact they use two batteries cr123 they're almost the same body size the 511 is just a little bit smaller i'm wondering if it has the same handle construction that i could use it as a weapon light um, it is definitely designed as a tactical light i picked these up at, i was over at the store the other day uh, and i picked these 511 ones up for like 
I think they were like $8 or something like that because they were like on sale, on a sale, on a sale. They were just trying to remove them. I don't know if they're upgrading the body or the discontinuing. I have no idea. But uh, I've been EDCing one of these around as well and I've really enjoyed that. And they're almost the like same price normally and same body construction and same like power outage. So I wanted to see if possibly the 511 is a good weapon light and which one like is better between the two because they're very similar. So flashlight testing, that's what's going on right now. Got a Leatherman Juice that I'm uh, doing some stuff with and trying to get the the review done on this you know I, I EDC in between this guy and my uh, squirt back and forth just depending on uh, lightweight EDC or heavy duty EDC this is more like heavy duty EDC on my body um, working on the Gerber cleaver what is this the flat iron frame lock lots of cool aspects to it um, the steel we are trying I'm, I'm doing some testing I was actually really surprised at the edge retention of the 7, 7CR17 MOV steel. I have to do some more testing before I do the final review on it because I want to give you guys my like really good testing on it, particularly for edge. That's really what I want to want to do, but that is coming soon. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, man. Strong arm. I was doing some other stuff. This is the B, uh, what is it? BDZ1 limited run they did. So sick. If you don't own a strong arm, get a strong arm. Gerber, make them all the time in either S30V or like 154 CM so we can get a better edge retention, please. Uh, 420 is okay, and for 50 to 60 bucks, it's doable. Uh, but for a lot of people who use their knives a lot, edge retention is a must, and um, uh, I would just like to see that. That would be awesome. So let's get a higher quality version as well. Charge us like 100, 110 max. Um, give us maybe like green and blue or something. Uh, handle options. And we would, I, I know I'd be in love and many other people would as well. This is a cool one here really quick. Uh, Coast, you know, which is known for doing mostly like flashlights and stuff. Let's see if I can get this camera to zoom in here. Look at that. Um, I picked this up for like 25 bucks. Frame lock, it's heavy, it's like five ounces. But frame lock G10, I think, on the other side. Pocked out, full flat grind, three-way directional pocket clip, bronze washers. Again, like $25, 9CR, I think it's 18 MOV or 14 MOV, so better than 8CR or OS8 in edge retention. Having a lot of fun with this one. Great, like, beater knife uh, or just hard-to-use knife that, you know, doesn't going to break the bank. So that's uh, working on that review right now. Final one, the fi uh, two things. Got this guy working on some just review video stuff that I'm doing. Uh, Sawyer water filter water bottle. This thing is great. Just grab and go. You're hiking. Dip it in your leg, dip it, dip it in the stream that you're, you know, walking next to. Boom, hit it. Great water purification there. Uh, and then I cannot believe it's taking me so long, but I do have two D2 versions, uh, two different sizes of the Romer, the Romer 305 with the orange handle D2 and the Romer, what is this, uh, R300 in D2. More survival side, more like companion side. Have not used them at all yet, but super excited to do it. And I think these are gonna be great kind of uh, sub $100 knives, depending on what you're looking for in that Romer line from Steel Will. So um, some of the stuff we talked about, guys, I'll have in uh, the description below in those Amazon Blaze Q hyperlinks that we talked about. But that's what's on the table, that's what I'm working on, that's some stuff that uh, is in the works, or just kind of remind you of stuff that maybe you have forgotten about that we've tested in the past. All right, now a few questions from the mailbag. And don't forget, if you wanna ask your questions and have them possibly answered in an upcoming video, put hashtag mailbag and I'll take a look at them and I might answer them. Uh, and don't forget again, if you want Mrs. Gideon's Tactical to answer them next week, make sure to say hashtag mailbag Mrs. GT and then uh, we'll make sure she uh, has an opportunity to possibly answer them live. So um, the first one comes from SoCal Outdoor Adventures. Uh, and I really like this question. And now I remember why this was on the table. It was for this question. Um, and I kind of forgot about that. But uh, when it comes to water filters, especially if you are doing a through hike, going hiking in general or camping out, what is the best way to keep your filter primarily in colder weather from cracking and no longer being usable? Great show. Thanks. Um, that's awesome, and I really appreciate uh, SoCal Outdoors, I'm assuming Southern California, which I am also originally from. Uh, shout out, whoop, whoop, um, from there. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, this is just one example of uh, those hollow filters. And, you know, there's every company under the sun, sun out there. And uh, this is the thing. Is, to my knowledge, maybe, and please tell me, guys, if you know of one that I would love to test it out, if you know of one that can withstand freezing temperatures. 
everyone that I'm aware of, of these hollow filter, you know, some form of filter from, you know, LifeStraw and Sawyer and MSR and all of them, um, they, if, if the water gets below 32 degrees and freezes, it expands all the pores, now making it unusable, and when it shrinks back down, it's, it's broken. The filter is broken, it will not purify your water properly, you will get sick, and it basically becomes worthless and you need to just throw it away. So um, that's a downer, and particularly for me living in the Rockies, where it absolutely about a quarter to you know a third of the year, we're out in conditions where uh, we need water, but uh, it is below 32 degrees when we're out testing and reviewing and doing all the stuff that we do. So there's, to my knowledge, really no way to do it. If you know the temperature is going to get down to that low or close and you're kind of concerned, uh, I mean, you could sleep with it. You could put it in your tent. Usually your tent is a little bit warmer by a couple degrees than what's outside. So that's a, that's a good way to start. Um, and then if you're really concerned about it for some reason, or, you know, you know, a cold snap's coming in, just sleep with it in your sleeping bag. I mean, there's no other real way to preserve your water filters uh, in cold conditions below freezing. Um, and in that case, then you've got to go with some, you, you know, you can do bleach and, you know, get the right percentage so you don't poison yourself. Um, you know, do everything at your own risk, but uh, you can, you know, bleach out most contaminants out of water uh, or, you know, do iodine tablets. Those are basically cold weather alternatives from everything I've researched and, just, you know, follow myself and whatever, or you got to boil it. I mean, there's no real other way to purify your water that I am aware of. So I hope that answers the question. The next one comes from, again, man, Darth Kroll, you're just like hitting it up with the questions. Um, this is a good one though. What would you recommend as a good coffee for someone like me who would be, who would, okay, to acquire, so they're trying to acquire a taste for it, since coffee is more readily available than my usual source of caffeine, thanks. So that's a great question. Um, so for me, a little history, so I went to Russia for two weeks when I was 18 years old, um, did a mission trip there, it was awesome, I had a blast, great, great people over there. That was back, I think like 2004, 2004, I think is when I went. Um, and I was not really into coffee. I'd have it very rarely. Um, I was 18 years old, but we were up for about like, you know, five, we, we only got about five hours of sleep. So I uh, just had whatever was available of the Russian coffee that was there. And it was like sludge, thick as molasses almost. I mean, it was insane. And not a lot of cream around. So I just had to drink black coffee for like two weeks to keep me awake. And after that, I was hooked. So um, you can do it that way. You can just try and find like the darkest stuff possible and just start drinking. Um, Brand wise, I can't really like, I mean, I love Black Rifle Coffee. I've been getting into them a lot. Uh, I have a Costco membership. I usually get a lot of stuff there. Um, their Pinion Coffee is really good. Uh, Pinion Coffee, or you could just, you know, maybe I'll try and throw a link below. Um, Pinion Coffee has kind of like a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a uh, cinnamony, I don't know, kind of flavor to it, uh, which is really good. Otherwise, um, I think it's Javalia. It's the yellow bag. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Javalia has some really good stuff. And I would try to start out with maybe some flavored stuff and work your way to darker stuff. Or again, just like two weeks and just like drink it every day. It goes thick and dark as you can um, and, and do it that way. So, um, but the, the thing I would say is try not to get hooked on coffee that has to have creamer or milk in it because not only is it just a little more healthy for you, you're not going to have as much calories, but then when you do put creamer and, you know, flavor stuff, it's more of a treat than it is like a necessity to have coffee. I mean, I know people that I'm like, dang, you want some coffee with your creamer? Um, but, uh, uh, that's what I would recommend. Hopefully that answers the question. And those would be some companies that I would at least look at that I listed that might help you out. All right, and this is where we'll take a real brief time out before we do our last segment of the day. And just remind you guys of our new affiliate that we have, Knock Around Sunglass Company. Um, they've been around a while, and I just got a comment from somebody saying they've been rocking Knock Around Sunglasses for 10 years, and they love them. So that's really cool. Somebody commented on, I believe it was on Instagram. Uh, no, it was on another uh, YouTube video that we did. But uh, yeah, Knock Around Sunglass Company recently landed an affiliate with them. So uh, it's a simple way that if you're looking for inexpensive sunglasses, you're tired of either dropping you know one or two hundred dollars on high-end glasses that you're totally concerned that at a moment's notice your kids are going to you know snap and break. You're going to drop on the concrete and scratch up the lens and it's totally trash. Uh, or you're tired of the dollar store you know no nothing sunglasses that uh, just never seem to fit right, cause pain and are just usually super dark and are just relying on darkness and not actual either UV protection or on polarization. 
Knockaround has all of that. They have male, female, custom shop, and children's as well. And they're just a really cool company that uh, I'm really enjoying, my family's really enjoying. So check them out, Knockaround sunglasses below, links below, and thank you for supporting the channel, not only through the Amazon Blade HQ, but now with our Knockaround affiliate, if you're in the market, for some inexpensive, but I believe high-performing, sunglass wear. And that leads us to our last segment, verse of the week. This is the verse of the week. We'll do this from time to time uh, where there's just a scripture that really connects with me that I think will help you guys just in life and, and you know what you deal with. And so the one that I uh, want to kick this off with is out of Proverbs. And this is Proverbs 11, 17. And it says, a man who is kind benefits himself but a cruel man hurts himself. And I love that set of scripture because it reminds me a lot, and I think particularly because I know most of you guys watching are men, and if you're not watching um, men, you know, women can be absolutely cruel as well, but uh, I bet you you guys, a lot of your girlfriends and wives would be like, yeah, you can kind of be harsh, you can be kind of cruel sometimes. And uh, when we're cruel and we're rude, we're harsh, we're mean with maybe um, uh, employees, uh, coworkers, family, Man, I mean, you know, family usually takes the brunt of our attitudes in life, and uh, it, it only hurts us. It's not something that we can like, mm. and, and just to be rude and cruel is never beneficial for us, and it's only going to hurt us. And uh, I, I'm just thinking of like my son, you know, there are moments where my, my two-year-old, you know, he's acting crazy, you know, he's Tarzan, screaming and yelling, bouncing off of stuff, knocks something over, or, you know, throws something at, you know, GT Junior number two, Mark two, you know, and, and like it hits him and he starts crying and it's just like, oh, you know, and you're, in the moment you can be kind of cruel and, you know, and like, stop that, you know, and knock it off. And, and it can come off as very hurtful. And I don't want to have that type of relationship with my son. And I always try and work on, on that tenderness and kindness. But also uh, just today, you know, my wife and I were at a coffee shop with the kids and we're, you know, drinking coffee and there was a, a solicitor kind of on the corner trying to get uh, signatures for something. And most people that walk past were just so rude, you know, and cruel, you know, like, no, I don't have time. No, nah, 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 get out of it, you know, kind of thing. And, uh, you know, the, the opportunity is there just to, you don't have to, you know, even take the time out if you don't want to, but just be kind. Be like, you know what? No, I don't really have the time right now. Thank you. You know, if, if you uh, uh, don't want us to take the time to, you know, sign a petition or whatever it is that somebody's doing, we don't have to be cruel. And when we are, it only ends up hurting ourselves. So I just encourage you this week, be kind to your family, your loved ones, and random strangers, people you don't know. You don't know how much it will benefit you, your heart, your soul as well. It just, when we show love and kindness, it changes and transforms us from the inside out. So uh, guys, I really hope that you have enjoyed this episode of the Gideon's Tactical Show, episode two. Again, love to hear your guys' feedback. Any comments that you guys have, this is a new take on our content. We're going to continue to do the reviews. So don't worry about that. If you're just into gear reviews and you don't like this type of content, cool, no problem. Don't watch these episodes. But I think a lot of you are going to get a lot of benefit and enjoyment and just add another layer to the entertainment value that we produce here on a weekly basis here at Gideon's Tactical. But I want to hear your guys' constructive criticism. If there are things that you wanted me to drop, things that you would like me to add, ideas, concepts, want to hear it all, leave those comments below. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, social media doing giveaways, doing other content. You'll see photos, upcoming projects I'm working on. And guys, it's just another way to communicate. And finally, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.